building we're, we're sat in here today. And also Emma Thatcher, who's our creative enterprise manager. Um, and as, as was just mentioned, we work with all sorts of students, and Emma especially focuses on creative students. So a lot of those come from the CAS and our art school, but you, we find them all over the university. Um, we'll be covering, I'm going to give you a brief intro to, to what we do here. But we've also got a few case studies for you today. So we've invited in some students and some startups who have been through various programs that we run to come and tell you their side of things and how it's worked for them. So we'll be talking about a branding project we've worked on, um, a Kickstarter, which is a crowdfunding project, and our launch pad, which is kind of our, our biggest program for people who are ready to actually start businesses and get their businesses off the ground. Uh, and then we'll have time for lots of questions, uh, and if we have time at the end, we can give you a bit of a tour of the building too. Um, so, what makes Accelerator different? Well, first of all, before we, we, we get there, we get to know, is everyone kind of familiar with what an Accelerator is, what a business incubator is, those, t those terms? You're nodding. Do you, want, what, yes. you, you give us a definition of, of an Accelerator and a business incubator. Well, the incubator. Yeah. yeah. That's just a place where we uh, uh, help grow uh, some business new ideas. Yeah. That's an incubator. Okay. And then accelerator is uh, I suppose it's some yeah, business incubator for uh, the government. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So business incubator exactly. You know, we support businesses. This term of accelerator, uh, especially in, in London and America, has has become to be used in the last few years as a specialized short-term program for accelerating the growth of a company, normally around 10 to 12 weeks. And so we actually do run a program like that. That's our Launchpad program for students and graduates. Um, but even though we're called Accelerator, we're, we're more of a, a business incubator. And I guess what's special about us, what's different about us, instead of having, as most universities do, a place to support innovation and entrepreneurship on campus, London Met has created this place right in the heart of Tech City. It's an amazing location, and we've filled the, the building up with really successful startups, which then are there to help our students and graduates get started. So that access to startups is, is really powerful. So a bit, a bit of um, context and background. Um, you guys are from all over the world, uh, and I'm sure your environments and markets are very different than ours. But London has been through an incredible journey in the last few years in terms of um, being a, a home and an ecosystem that supports new business and startups. So uh, last year, there were 184,000 companies started just in London. And about 16,000 loads were started in this postcode around this building. Uh, there were $2.9 billion of investment into startups last year in the UK. And that's gone up four times just from two years ago and about 20 times from four years ago. So you can see that the amount of investment going in is really uh, skyrocketing, which is allowing companies to stay in London and grow uh, to a much bigger amount. And that's resulting in, is everyone familiar with this term unicorn? You come across this before? So, you, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, a unicorn is a new term for uh, a company with a billion-dollar valuation, and so they're so rare that you do they even exist? But yes, there are a few of them. Um, and in London, uh, two years ago there were none, and now there's about ten. So it's really exciting to see that before companies would have to leave London to go to America to get to that next stage, now they can do that here. And that's because London has this great mix of, of culture and excitement. People want to be here, want to work here. But it also has you know, a huge financial uh, market right here on the doorstep, just down the road of the city. Great talent from all over the world. Um, and it's allowed this kind of scalability of companies. And we're here. Uh, and this is a map of what they call Tech City, which is really kind of a branding exercise that the UK government have done to show London as a, as a home of, of technology startups. But it has done a great job in terms of bringing a spotlight to London across the world. And you can see we're, we're right in the middle of it. And so I mentioned that um, unlike most university places, we actually mix working with real world 
startups and students and graduates. And so this building is full of uh, 29, 30 uh, real world growing companies, all at early stages. Um, and we've just did our stats for last year. We always like to see what they've been up to. So in 2016, uh, they raised 8.8 .8 million pounds of investment. Um, they had actually 9 million pounds of revenue, which was a big jump for them. And they created 122 new jobs. Um, so those are the kind of companies that are there to support our students and graduates. And actually, um, some of those are uh, started and founded by London Met students and graduates too. And then on the other side of what we do is obviously help people from London Met start businesses. And what we've seen, I'm not sure if you've had the same experience, is that there's a real growing demand among students and young people that have the aspiration to start their own business. I think there's a, a few reasons for that. One is become kind of more culturally acceptable to start your own business. It's not the kind of crazy thing that you think you might do and your parents worry about you anymore. It's actually seen as a, as a, as a good career opportunity. Um, it's the, the risk has gone down. The, the cost of starting a business has gone down. Technology has meant that you can do this without having to you know, mortgage your house or take a huge loan. You can bootstrap in those early days. Uh, and the amount of investment, especially in places like London, has meant that there is that capital there to grow when you get beyond those kind of seed stages. So this is a study that was done a few years ago, and it said actually when they surveyed students, 61% of them had this idea that they would love to run their own business one day. So that's over half the people that we're dealing with, our, our customers at, as a university, have a dream that they would like to do something like this. So London Met has invested and committed to helping them have pathways to reach that dream. And that's paying off. So this is across the UK, 1,200% increase in the number of young people taking part in entrepreneurship programs at university and actually going forward and trying to work in a startup or start their own business. So what we actually do on the student side, we work with about 1,000 students each year. That could be from anything from coming to a, a, a talk here to actually some more hands-on programs, which I'll talk about. We actually start 10 to 20 companies a year, um, and about 150 students we work with hands-on in one of our more intensive programs to give them those first steps in terms of learning how to start their own business and, and getting it off the ground. So these are some of our programs. Um, big idea challenge I'll talk to you about briefly. The Hatchery is a space that we have downstairs. So all of the different programs our students do, if they come to the end of them and they've been successful and they've actually got potential to start a business, we give them six months of free rent and mentorship and support here in the building uh, where they can actually get the build, uh, their idea off the ground. Uh, Launchpad we'll talk about, we do lots of talks, um, we do a market day where we actually give uh, creative people who've got a product or an idea um, free, a free stall in a market just before Christmas on the busiest shopping days of the year to test their idea, get in front of real customers uh, and hopefully make some money too. Uh, and then more and more we're working with different parts of the university around what we're calling work-related learning. I'm not sure if this is something Dominic mentioned yesterday, but the university has made a commitment that every student at London Met will have a work-related learning opportunity, which could be a, a real-world project, which is what we'll talk about, but it could be an internship or working with a company. And that's something that we've seen actually has a big impact in terms of their employability and their employment outcomes when they graduate. So quickly before I hand over and we'll do our kind of first case study. Um, actually before I get onto that, is there any kind of general questions about acceleration and what we do here? Nothing. Everything we've, we've covered so far? Yeah. Uh, what kind of challenge do you find? Like, uh, you know, initially the students may show some interest in the projects, mm -hmm. okay? But do they fall out? Like, after some time, something, you know, it's growing good, but then the suddenly the students have some other interest or because a good job and it goes it's back off. Yeah, massively. Kind of yeah, massively. I mean, it's a huge um, pool of people that we work with at the beginning. All right. Um, but it's actually a very small number. You know, ten to twenty businesses launched every year. 
is a relatively small number compared to the thousand students that we deal with every year. So yes, I'd say it's not for everyone. You almost want it to be hard, it is hard, and set those um, tough, tough targets so people do drop out, because it's only people that are super committed that should be going into this in the first place. Um, the other thing you mentioned there is people get jobs, and uh, students at London Met aren't necessarily come from wealthy backgrounds, and so having enough money to be able to start a company without an, a loan from, the, for, from parents or some savings is an extremely hard thing to do. So that's one of the particular challenges that we face as a university, is that lots of the students that we work with, even when they get to the stage of launching a business, um, have to have part-time jobs too. And so being able to juggle those two is extremely difficult. Yeah. Okay. Well, there'll be lots of times for, qu for questions later, so um, we can come back to that. Uh, so one of our projects, I just mentioned this because it's the one we're kicking off with um, at the moment. So this is the next, the next thing we're rolling out to students this year. It's called our, <coughs> our Big Idea Challenge. And this is really our, our uh, annual, it used to be a business plan competition. It's now, uh, no one uses business plans anymore. Um, so it's now an idea competition. Um, a pitching competition, and the real idea is that we will take ideas uh, from students, from graduates, even it's actually open to teachers as well at London Met, to unearth the most interesting, exciting ideas, and then help champion them to, to come to life. And so um, they go through a, a big process, but they end up being voted on by the public. They're all online, and we had votes from over 10,000 people from 124 countries last year. So you can see that you know, these ideas actually have, have a global reach, and I think some of that reflects the students that we have at London Met. They've got those kind of networks and connections. Um, but it also shows you the interest and appetite in kind of entrepreneurship and looking for those next ideas. So there is an audience out there for, for things like this. OK, I will now um, pass those students. There's no more questions. I'll hand over to Emma, who's going to talk about um, one particular project that we've been working on recently. Okay, thank you.